thanks to Jesus and appreciate him for tonight. Let's thank him, let's give him all the glory and praise for his word that was this. Once again, God's people, you are welcome. The Lord bless you for coming in Jesus' mighty name. Tonight, we want to continue in our series of teachings titled The Waiting Room. And this will be part 3B. The Waiting Room. This is part 3B. And for those who are joining us for the first time, God has been showing us several things on the power of prayer. And when we are talking about the waiting room, like I shared two Sundays ago, oh, that the waiting room is the prayer room. The prayer room is the waiting room. And then last Sunday I shared with us that the waiting room is the spiritual gym where you build your faith. The waiting room is a place of faith building. If you missed any of those messages online, please, I strongly encourage that you go on our website I'm sorry, go on our YouTube site as well as our Facebook page and watch those messages for free. The Lord will bless you as you do so in Jesus' name. Tonight, we want to take our text from the book of Joshua, Joshua chapter 18, and I will read the first three verses. Joshua chapter 18 from verse 1 to 3. The Bible says, And the whole congregation of the children of Israel assembled together at Shiloh and set up the tabernacle of the congregation there. And the land was subdued before them. And there remained among the children of Israel seven tribes which had not yet received their inheritance. And Joshua said unto the children of Israel, How long are ye slack to go to possess the land which the Lord God of your fathers has given you? How long, verse 3, how long are ye slack to go to possess the land which the Lord God of your fathers has given unto you? By way of introduction this evening, I want to share with us that God has something great for all of us as children, but sometimes the requirements for him giving us these things is to wait upon him. God desires, he says in 3 John verse 2, that I, I wish above all things that you prosper and be in health even as your soul prospered. However, sometimes the requirement for receiving any of this goodness or promises of God requires us to wait, to wait, to wait, to wait upon God. Glory be to God. And I want you to know also that waiting on God is not waiting for God. Waiting on God is not waiting for God. When we are talking about waiting on the Lord, it's not that you are waiting for God as though God is slack or, so, or as though you are waiting for God to do something. You are waiting on him, not for him. God is not slack concerning his promises. The Bible tells us that in 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9, that God is not slack concerning his promises, as other men count slackness. So when we talk about waiting for God, waiting on God, we don't mean waiting for God. It's two different things. Waiting for God would connote that God is slow or God is not uh, uh, moving with your time. But we are waiting on God. It's two, two totally different things. What else do I want to emphasize this evening? That when we wait on God, we are not waiting for things to happen. When we are waiting on God, we are not waiting for what we want. We are waiting for who will give us what we want. Please understand this. I'm taking my time to build this faith in you because understanding is what birth faith understanding birth faith so when we're talking about waiting on god you are not waiting on what you want from god you are waiting on the god that has what you want 
So the focus when you are waiting on God should not be on what you want, but should be on the person that can give you what you want, and that is the Almighty God. Am I making sense to you tonight? Are you understanding what God is saying? So you are not waiting on, let's say, a promotion. No. You are waiting on the God who promotes. The Bible says he lifts one up and he pulls one down. In fact, we are not waiting on what we want because the Bible tells us that all things are ready. Jesus said it in Luke chapter 14 verse 7. It says, now all things are ready. So this is important to note. I cannot overemphasize that. A lot of people claim to be waiting on God. Meanwhile, in their heart of hearts, they know that they are only waiting for what they want from God. Once they receive it, they are gone. Once their hand handles it, that's it. Once they, 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 they become what they have been waiting on God for, God won't see them again. You won't see them in church. You won't see them in fellowship. They will cut off. That's an evidence of those who wait on what they want. But those that wait on God, wait on him with their whole heart. So it's important for you to tell yourself the truth today. When you say you are waiting on God, are you truly waiting on God or you are waiting for what God can do? I, do you take God as a washing machine, for example, just to wash away your sins? And when your sins are forgiven, you go back and sin again. Or as an ATM, where you only go when you need money. Waiting on God is not what, waiting on what you want. Glory be to God. Also, I want to tell you know tonight that every child of God, at one point or the other, will experience at least one season of their life where they are waiting on God for something. Every child of God has at least one waiting period in their lifetime. For example, David was anointed at the age of 17. He never ascended the throne on the age of, until the age of 30. That was 13 years of waiting. You can see that in 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 13. When Samuel anointed him with oil and the Spirit of the Lord came upon him from that day forward. And then you can see that he didn't really ascend the throne until 2 Samuel chapter 5, verse 4. So every one of us will have at least one season of our life. Maybe you are in that season now. I know I'm in that season now. There's a lot of things I'm waiting upon the Lord for. For the promises of God. You don't know what it is when God has shown you the future, but your present doesn't look like your future. You don't know what it is when God has shown you what he has in stock for you, but they have not yet been manifest here on the earth. Many of us are in that phase. But I want to tell you something, that it is not uncommon. What you are going through is not uncommon. At least every believer, at least once in their lifetime, at least once, will experience a season of waiting on the Lord. This drives me to the, my next point, that the waiting room is not convenient. Waiting on the Lord for two, three, four, ten, or maybe in the case of David, 13 years. After he had been anointed, anointed, declared, empowered, everything seemed to be ready to go. But there was no throne. There was no, no coronation, nothing. The waiting room is not convenient. It's not a convenient room. But the good news is this. We have the Holy Ghost who is there to comfort us in our seasons of waiting upon him. I love the Holy Ghost. I, I love him. I can't do without him. If I complain, <laughs> if, if, if I complain to man, not complain, quote unquote, to man, or express my concerns to a man, as much as I exp express myself to the Holy Spirit, that person will collapse. If you were to offload all your burdens, all your worries on a human being, that person will collapse. But we have the fellowship of the Holy Spirit to express. That is why everyone who doesn't have the Holy Spirit, you are cheating yourself out of life. 
That's why many people commit suicide. They are hopeless and seemingly helpless. They are overwhelmed in their waiting season. But we have the Holy Spirit. The Bible says in John 14, 26, he said, but the comforter, the Holy Spirit, my God, is there in our waiting season to give us hope, to encourage us, to, to, to motivate us, to show us the light at the end of the tunnel. The Holy Ghost is always there to comfort us while we wait. Next point, I'm doing an introduction here. I haven't started preaching yet. Next point. It is important to note that in this life there is no competition. Everyone has his own appointed times. Your waiting season is different from my waiting season. Your waiting period is totally different from mine. Don't be envious of those whose seasons are manifesting. They've been through their own period of waiting. There is no star without a scar. There is no victor without a fight. There is no champion without the battle. So your waiting period is different. But the good news is this. My Bible says in Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 11 that God makes all things beautiful in his time. When your time comes, beauty, your beauty manifests. It's at this junction I want to prophesy for somebody under the sound of my voice. In the name of Jesus Christ, your time of favor has come. In the name of Jesus Christ. Your waiting is over. Your time of favor has come. And the beauty of the Lord will come upon you. Psalm 90 verse 17 says, Let the beauty of the Lord come upon us and establish the works of our hands. Yea, the work of our hands that will establish. Your beauty will show for the world to see. Your talent, your gift, your craft, your labor, your investment will yield good returns in the name of Jesus. Our waiting periods are different. So no need for competition in this kingdom. No need for competition. Rejoice with them that are rejoicing. Pray for those that God is lifting. Celebrate them. Be a part of their progress. Sow seeds into their lives. It's not the time to be envious or jealous of those who are gone through a period of waiting. Let's use our understanding and the Lord will help us. Let's take this as a lifestyle and the Lord will help us in the name of Jesus Christ. I have a few more points here because today's message will be very short and concise but I want somebody, somebody is being blessed right now by these words. The Holy Spirit spoke them to me and I had to write them down because he wants to minister life to someone. He wants to give somebody hope of a better tomorrow. And I know that person is you. So hang on. There is more to come. Hallelujah. Next point here I want to share with us is that the waiting room is not a wasting room. What does that mean? The waiting room is not a wasting room. While you are waiting, God is walking. <laughs> while you are waiting God is cooking something for you while you are waiting on him remember we are not waiting for him or waiting for things we are waiting on him and if truly you are waiting on him he has something big for you he said in Psalm 34 I believe verse, uh, verse 9 Psalm 34, verse 9. Psalm 34, verse 5. I'm sorry. Psalm 34, verse 5. It says, They looked unto him and were lightened, and their faces were not ashamed. You won't be put to shame. It will end for you in a testimony. Psalm 34, verse 5. They looked unto him, and their faces were lightened, and they were not put to shame. 
If truly you are waiting on the Lord, if truly your focus, your attention, your desire is of the Lord, God will surely come through for you. God is surely come through for you. Philippians 2 verse 13. Philippians chapter 2 verse 13. The Bible says it is God who worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. The waiting room is not a wasting room. God is working things out for you. And he's working on you in the process. So relax. Rejoice. Let the Spirit of God take total control of you. Don't struggle. Relax. God is at work. God is working for you. Glory be to God. I will share two more and then we go straight into the message. Remember our text is still from the book of Deuteronomy. I'm sorry, uh, Joshua chapter 18, verse 1 to 3 that we just read. But I'm laying this foundation tonight so that somebody here would have an appreciation for what God is doing in their life. Number next point here is that while you are waiting, you may be easily misunderstood. People will misunderstand your patience. People will, mis- be, people will be bothered that you are not bothered. People will be bothered that you are calm. When you are in your waiting period, it's going to look like the case of Hannah and Penina, the wives of Elkanah. While Hannah was waiting for her Samuel, Penina made a mockery of her. And I believe it was not only Penina. I believe everyone that saw her come to Shiloh every year have also said something in their hearts about Hannah. Why is it that her, only her prayers are not answered? At least we know the man is not important. Look at Penina having children. It is this woman. The problem is with her. You will be misunderstood. In your waiting period, not everybody will understand. Not everybody will understand you. So don't seek for their endorsement. You don't owe anybody an an, uh, explanation. People may look at you and say, look at you. We know that you started this business out of pride. That's why this business is not growing. Or look at you. You you are lazy. That's why your business is not growing. Or that's why your ministry is not growing. Or that's why something is not growing. People will speak and say all kinds of things. But relax. It's a matter of time. Relax. Your time has come in the name of Jesus. Last point I want to bring up here. And this is very important. I heard these words from Bishop David Abuye of the Living Faith Church Worldwide. He said, when you are waiting on God, while you are in the waiting room, never for one minute think that God has abandoned you. My God. Never think for once that God has abandoned you. He said in his word, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Never for once. He says in Matthew 28, 20, Lo, I am with you always until the end. Don't ever think that God has abandoned you. Don't buy the lie of the devil. Don't take the bait of the enemy to compromise to curse God and die, to deny the faith. Don't ever think that God has left you. Sometimes in your waiting room, it might look like you can't feel the presence of God. (laughs) I shared with our congregation, the, the Church of God, about three Sundays ago, I shared with them how the mother eagle teaches the baby eagle to fly. Please go and watch that first Sunday service. I don't want to repeat that. It might seem like a season where you are not receiving anything from the Lord. As if the Lord has departed from you. No. He says, Lord, I am with you. Always. Always. All the way. So don't let the devil lie to you that God has departed from you. 
I trust that even by these nuggets of introduction, somebody has been blessed. I trust that the Holy Spirit has ministered hope to somebody. I trust that somebody now sees things from a different perspective. I trust that somebody is energized with strength in their inner man to pursue. Because when you pursue, you will surely over overtake and without fail, recover all in the name of Jesus Christ. Well, this message that we read in the book of Joshua chapter 18, verse 1 to 3, was a story of how the children of Israel gathered and all the tribes were given their inheritance. And when they give you the inheritance, it's not for you to see it. You go and pursue and drive out the inhabitants of the land and take over. And out of the 12 tribes, five of the tribes had done that. I mean, seven of the tribes had done that, but five remained who had not done that. They remained among the children of Israel. Seven tribes, I'm sorry. Seven, five had done that, seven was remaining. And Joshua challenged them. You see, when you are waiting on the Lord, there are some things you need to wait on the Lord for. And we talked about that last Wednesday. Again, please, if you didn't watch any of these messages, go back and watch them for free. It's going to bless your life. There are some things you need to wait upon the Lord for. And there are some things you should not wait for. Because why? It is already given. For example, in this case of Joshua chapter 18 that we read, Joshua was telling the folks, the seven tribes, why are you still waiting? You see, this whole thing about religion is what the devil uses to cheat people of their blessings. It's important to know that in the kingdom of God, there are some things that you need to wait on God for. There are some things that God has already given to you. You just have to act and take possession of it. That was the case that we're talking about here. In the case of the children of Israel, the seven tribes, they are not yet taking possession of the land which God has already given to them. So it's important to know whatever you claim you are waiting on God for, be sure that God has not already given it to you. I will give a few examples. Number one is salvation. We don't wait for salvation. We don't wait for salvation. You can't postpone salvation. Salvation is the free gift of God. And freely has it been given already. In 2 Corinthians, Corinthians chapter 6, verse 2. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 2. The Bible says, For he said, I have heard thee in a time accepted, and in the day of salvation I succor thee. Behold, now is the accepted time. Today is the day of salvation. You don't wait for salvation. You don't wait for salvation because it has already been given. You take salvation. There is no day that God does not save. There is no day that God cannot save. There is no day that God is on office hours. There is no time where God is on vacation. Any day a sinner repents and comes to Jesus, that same moment is accepted. So if somebody is waiting for Easter or Christmas or all these people that come to the church once a year at you know, New Year's Eve to give their hearts to Jesus, it might be too late. Now is the accepted time. Today is the day of salvation. The Ethiopian eunuch, in the book of Acts of the Apostles, chapter 8, verse 36 to 38, as soon as Philip had explained the scripture in Isaiah that he was reading to him, the next river that he saw, he told Philip, this is water, why can't I be baptized? Philip said, of course, because you don't wait for salvation, friends. Tell your neighbor, tell your parents, tell your sibling. Now is the accepted time. Today is the day of salvation. 
We don't wait. We don't wait for salvation. What about the jailer and the keeper of the prison in the book of Acts of Apostles, chapter 16, where Paul and Silas were held bound after the angel of the Lord had encountered and opened the prison? The, jail, the keeper of the prison came and said, what shall we do to be saved? What shall we do to be saved? You must know that you don't need to waste time. You don't need to waste time. There is no time that God does not save. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And he said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved, thou and thy household. The Bible says, And when he had brought and he took them the same hour of the night. Act of the Apostles, chapter 16, verse 33. Act 16, 33. And he took them the same hour of the night, those guys, and washed their stripes. And they were baptized. And all his straight away. Don't wait. We don't wait in the kingdom of God for salvation. You must take it by faith and take it now. Secondly, we don't wait on the Lord for healing or deliverance. We don't wait. We don't wait because God has already provided our healing. God wants us to be healed. It is his will. Jesus met the man in Matthew chapter 8 and the man said, if you will, make me clean. And Jesus said, yeah, why not? I will. Be thou cleansed. And he received the sight the same day. We don't wait for healing and deliverance. Don't let the devil tell you, maybe today God is not uh, in the mood. <laughs> uh, uh, maybe today is just for a particular set of people, not for you. That's not true. There's a testimony of a woman I heard went to, uh, I believe it was Kenneth Egan's meetings, Kenneth E. Egan. After the healing prayer had been done and the service was almost over, the woman walked up to the man of God and said, Sir, I came to this healing crusade because I'm supposed to be healed today. <laughs> Have you seen that kind of faith before? Where somebody walks up to the preacher and says, Sir, you are not going anywhere because I'm supposed to be healed today. Today. And then the man of God prayed for her and she was healed instantly. Don't wait for your healing. Take it. Isaiah 53 verse 5. He said, by his stripes we were healed. The price for your healing and deliverance has been paid. You just need to take your healing. Take your deliverance. Don't wait for another day. Don't be like that man at the pool of Bethesda in John chapter 5. That waited for 38 years by the pool. My God. What a lie of the devil. That God does not heal even on the Sabbath. Or on Sunday. No. The price has been paid. Take your healing. Take your deliverance. Challenge the devil. That look. He himself. bore my sicknesses and my diseases. The chastisement for my peace. Was put upon him. And by his stripes, I was healed. I have been healed. I have been healed. And I take my healing. We don't wait for things like that. That's not in the category of the things we wait for. We take it by faith. We take it by faith. And for somebody today, you are taking your healing and deliverance now. In the name of Jesus. Matthew 11 verse 12, Jesus said, From the, kid, from the time of John the Baptist, Matthew 11 verse 12. The kingdom of God suffers violence and the violent take it by force. Jesus was not talking about physical aggression or physical violence. He was talking about those who are violent in faith. Those whose faith is violent to take their healing. So don't wait. As I'm speaking now, you are healed in the name of Jesus. Say after me, I am healed and I am delivered. I am healed 
and I'm delivered. One more time, say it. I am healed and I am delivered in the name of Jesus Christ. Let me give us two more and then we pray. In the kingdom of God, we don't wait for prophecies to fulfill itself. There are many people sitting down and waiting that what God has said he will do. Yes, he will do. But there is something that you also must do to receive what he said he will do. There is no prophecy that fulfills itself. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 16 verse 9 that the great and effectual door is open but there are many adversaries. In other words, any time the prophetic word goes forth, any time a door is open to you in the realm of the spirit, the devil launches a counterattack to ensure that there is no manifestation here on the earth. So a man of God can prophesy accurately over you and it will not happen because no prophecy fulfills itself. Somewhere along the line, the devil enacts John chapter 10, verse 10. The Bible says, The thief cometh not, but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But I am come, that ye may have life, and have it more abundantly. Not I have come, I am come, that is, I am that I am. I am come, that ye may receive life. That's why Paul told his, his son in the Lord, Timothy, in 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 18, he said, This charge I commit unto thee, son Timothy, according to the prophecies which went, which went before on thee, that thou by them mightest war a good warfare. So when prophecies are released, it's like the stirring of the pool. You jump into it. You enforce it in the place of prayer. You enforce it. You, you, you take an action of faith for prophecies to fulfill themselves. Don't wait. Don't be slack. Take it. Do something with it. I love what God told the children of Israel in Deuteronomy chapter 2 verse 24. Deuteronomy chapter 2 verse 24. He said, Behold, I have given unto thee Sihon, the Hamorite, it's a rise up. Second uh, Deuteronomy chapter 2. Deuteronomy chapter 2, verse 24. It says, Rise ye up, take your journey, and pass over the river Anon. Behold, I have given unto thee Sihon, the Amorite, king of Hishbon, and his land. Begin to possess it and contend with him in battle. I have given it to you, but you still have to contend. There are many, many children of God that wait for prophecies to happen. Ah, God has said it. My pastor has prophesied. The man of God has said, oh, I have, I have received it from the word of God. That's great and beautiful. But you must war, warfare to see prophecies fulfilled. I remember recently a man of God released some hot prophetic blessings on my life. Hot hot, my God. And any time I remember, I am praying about it. I am praying. I say, God, remember your word. I am praying about it. That's how to see prophecies fulfilled. Don't wait. Don't wait. Don't delay. Don't slack. Prophecies don't self-fulfill themselves. Finally, I guess this is number four now. All of your inheritances in Christ has been paid for. Don't wait for them. Go and take them by faith. There are sevenfold inheritances that God has for us. When Jesus died, this is what he died to provide to us on the earth. Revelation chapter 5, verse 12. The Bible says, saying with a loud voice, what is the lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom? Are you counting? What is the lamb that was slain to receive power? One. Riches. Two. 
wisdom. Three, strength. Four, honor. Five, glory. Six, and blessing. All of these things Jesus has paid for. If there's any one of them missing in your life, don't wait for it. Go and get it. <laughs> Go and get it. Go and receive it. Go and take it. Go and enforce your right in Christ and take it. You know, the Bible says in Hosea chapter 4 verse 6, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Oh, uh, God doesn't want us to be rich because um, uh, riches, the, uh, money is the root of evil. That's not true. Money is not the root of evil. It is the love of money that is the root of evil. Money is not the root of, of evil. Money takes on the characteristics of the handler. Whatever is in your heart, money amplifies. Money helps you act out what you have in your mind. So if you are proud and you are trying to cover it up, when you have money, when money comes into your hand, money will expose it. So it's not money that is the root of evil. It's the love of money. So also if you are humble, when you have money, money will sh it will show. Money will bring out the humility in you. So there are several blessings of God that God has in stock for us. I love John 7, 37. The Bible says on that last day, the great day of the feast, Jesus rose up and said, if any man test, let him come. Just come and take. Come, come to the river of life. Come and drink freely. Don't wait for it. The price has been paid. Jesus Christ has died on the cross and he has given to us this sevenfold inheritance in Christ. So finally tonight, I want to read again that book of Joshua, chapter 18, verse 1 to 3. Particularly verse 3. Joshua said unto the children of Israel, and I'm saying unto you tonight, how long are you going to wait before you go and take that which belongs to you? How long are you going to watch yourself being cheated by the devil for what truly is yours? How long are you going to have the devil eat your lunch? How long will you allow the forces of weakness, wickedness, bully you? How long will you stand and watch? When will you arise and say no to the devil and say yes to Jesus? And give your heart to him. And make him the Lord and Savior of your heart. When are you going to surrender all to him? When are you going to hand over your battles to him? When are you going to take that which belongs to you? The waiting room is an important room. We all will go through it. But there are some things that you don't have to wait for. The difference of this, knowing the difference is key to not being cheated by the devil. Knowing the difference is key to living a victorious life here on the earth. Shall we bow our heads as we pray? Father, we want to thank you tonight for your word that you've sent to us. Thank you for opening our eyes. Thank you for revelation and impartation. Lord, we ask and pray tonight that as many as have received your word, I pray that that word will become flesh in them and there shall be testimonies from today in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, precious Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Before I wrap up tonight, I want to give anyone under the sound of my voice an opportunity. Who 
has not yet become a member of the family of Christ. You see, all of these things we talked about that doesn't require waiting, the healing and the deliverance, the inheritances in Christ, the fulfillment of prophecies, all of those things are exclusive reserved for the children of God. So if you are not yet a child of God, you are not entitled to it. You are, you are not even waiting. Yours is, you, you, you are not even qualified. So this evening, if you are under the sound of my voice, you want to say yes to Jesus. You want to ask him to forgive you of your sins. You want to return back to him. Maybe for the first time, or maybe another time. Maybe you've done it before and something happened. I'm not here to judge you. You have had the word of God today and you want to return to Jesus. If you are in any of these categories, please bow your heads, close your eyes, and say this prayer of faith after me. Say after me, Lord Jesus, I come to you tonight just as I am. I believe you died for me and on the third day you rose again that I may be justified. Please, Lord, Forgive me of my sins and make me your child again. I believe in my heart and I confess with my mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord. Now I know that I'm saved, I'm born again, I'm now a child of God. I am free from the power of sin to serve the living God. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. Amen. If you said that prayer, please keep your eyes closed and your head bowed as I pray over you. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, these ones have heard your word. They have returned to you tonight. Lord, I ask that you please forgive their sins. Please Heal them, restore them, repair them, renew them. Lord, I pray that the same grace that gave them the boldness to come forward and confess their sins and receive you, let that same grace keep them in boldness, ever standing for you. Let nothing sweep them away from their feet. Help them to stay committed to this confession of faith that they have professed. And on the last day, when you come to take us all home, may our garments be white as snow. May no iniquity be found in us. And may we all be ready and rapturable with you when you come to take us home. Thank you, precious Father. I burn every bridge that may be connecting this your people to sin and every attack of the enemy to lure them back to wickedness or to sin. Tonight, I decree that the fire of the Holy Ghost consumes them in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, precious Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen and amen. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. If you said that prayer tonight, congratulations. You are now saved. You are now a child of God, and I'd like to hear from you. So please send us a message on any of our social media platforms and let us know that you made the decision today to follow Jesus. Or you can send us an email at newbirth at tola.org. Newbirth at tola.org. That information is scrolling down on the bottom of your screen right now. Newbirth at tola.org. The Lord will bless you as you do so in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Everybody, let's lift up our hands to Jesus and appreciate him for tonight. Let's thank him. Let's give him all the glory and praise for his word that we have received, for the word of comfort and joy, for the word of faith that we have received from him. Father, thank you for sending your word and healing us and delivering us from our from destruction. Thank you, Abba Father. Lord, I give you all the praise and glory in the name of Jesus Christ. Speak to the Lord in one minute. Your declaration of faith 
from what you have received tonight, make your declaration, take your healing, enforce the prophecy over your life in the name of Jesus. Take a minute, decree, declare that thou mayest be justified. Put God to remembrance in one minute. Sonne le mokuri ma mara ba de mo son preketana yali kataye so praketa rota pale nindo so prekele rusha tabaya Lord remember Lord remember Lord remember in the name of Jesus Father, we thank you and blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. The Lord hear you and answer you speedily in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Before we close this service tonight, I'd like to remind us again of all our announcements and the meeting times this week. So please make sure that you are connected and you are engaged. And very importantly, don't forget our Bible reading for the week. Proverbs chapter 1 to Proverbs chapter 7. The Lord bless you as you do so in Jesus' mighty name. I want to pray specially for every partner of this ministry. And I want to express gratitude to God for you. For standing strong in the faith with God and partnering with God in this ministry. There are five categories of our partners. The first are those that pray for us. Pray for us. In the morning, the afternoon, text messages, calls, emails, even in their private time, pray for us. You are a key partner. The second is those that wish us well. Genuinely, not only do you pray for us, you wish us well. You want to see this ministry prosper. You want to see souls saved, rescued, you want to see God glorified. You want to see the number of disciples of Jesus in this church multiply. You wish us well. You are a partner. And every prayer I'm about to pray now will answer for you. The third are those who share our videos on their social media platforms. Those who let Jesus use their boats, their social media boats, that is, on Facebook because it's free. It doesn't cost anything. Maybe two or three clicks on, on Facebook, on Instagram, on uh, Snapchat, on uh, all the social media platforms. YouTube, you are a key partner. Number four, those that give. You give not only your tithe, your offerings, your free will offering, your seed to the Lord through this ministry for the financial well-being of this ministry. You are a partner. And number five, those that attend all our events. So you may be a five-fold partner, or maybe for now you are a two-fold partner. But I want to release special blessings of God upon your life. That the God that has helped us thus far, that God will stand by you. In everything you do, my God will stand by you. He will support you. He will announce you. He will endorse you. Anyone that rises up against you will fall for your sake. Any areas of concerns in your life, my God is putting them aside. You are blessed. You are highly favored of God and you are highly favored by men. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Always know that I love you. I have you and your prayer requests in my heart. And every time I pray to God, I pray that God visits you. And he will surely do so in Jesus' name. For those who don't know the fivefold and you have just been twofold, you want to be fourfold or fivefold, please go ahead and engage as the Lord gives you grace to do so in Jesus' mighty name. Let's wave our hands to the Lord tonight again and say, Father, thank you for today's service. Lord, we adore you. We celebrate you. There is no one like you. Be thou exalted and glorified 
In Jesus' mighty name, we have given thanks. Amen. Now go in peace. Return with testimonies. Every of your heart desires tonight, God is converting them to testimonies. It is well with you. Your going out and coming in is blessed. Your children and your family is blessed. The sun it shall not smite you by the day, nor the moon by the night. You are blessed in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Let's share the grace and fellowship. Surely God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. And we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Peace. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. My time of favor has come. Thank you, Jesus, for tonight. And thank you all for being a part of this awesome recharge service. I trust you've been blessed. Please share your testimonies with us. Let's know what God has done for you and what God is doing in your life. And we vow to give God all the glory and praise with you and on your behalf in Jesus' mighty name. My name is again is Pastor D Plus, and I'm the lead pastor here at Tola, the House of Light Assembly. Saying this to you with all joy that no matter the situation, no matter the circumstances, God loves you and Jesus Christ is Lord. Amen. I'll see you this Saturday at 8 a.m. for our weekend family breakfast prayer. Invite someone and God bless you as you do so. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Our hands to Jesus and appreciate Him for tonight. Let's thank Him. Let's give all the glory and praise for His word that we have received.